Good morning, dear friends in Christ, on this fifth Sunday of Easter, May 2nd. This morning, we turn our attention to uh, 1 John chapter 4. And John tells us this morning, he says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. John goes on to tell us that we are to weigh everything against the word of God, and by doing this, we will be able to discern between the spirit of error and the spirit of truth. The truth, of course, is revealed in the gospel of Jesus Christ. If your church, your pastor, or your own heart isn't centered on the unchanging word of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ, then it is they who is an heir. Therefore, let us know God by his love for us through the gospel of his son, Jesus Christ. This is the litmus test. Uh, We'll talk a little bit more about that this morning. If you'd like to follow along with our service, you may do so by turning to page 260 in your hymnal for the service of prayer and preaching. And dear friends, let us begin. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord, Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. With joy will you draw water from the wells of salvation, and you will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, proclaim that his name is exalted. The Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be made known in all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitants of Zion, For great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. The Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. The first reading for the fifth Sunday of Easter is from Acts chapter 8. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go toward the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And he rose and went, and there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning seated in his chariot. And he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, Go over and join this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, How can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this, Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb before its shears is silent. So he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. And the eunuch said to Philip, About whom, I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with this scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop. And they both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, and went on his, on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, And as he passed through, he preached the gospel to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Our epistles from 1 John chapter 4. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. Little children, you are from God and have, not o- and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world. Therefore they speak from the world and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the, into the world, so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us, and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch of mine that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, He is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. And dear friends, we join together in confessing our one Christian faith, starting with the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his manservant, or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, and from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. John writes in 1 John chapter 4, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this, you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming, and now is in the world already. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world. Therefore they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God loved us, we also ought to love one another. Have you ever heard of the term litmus test? Originally, this term is used in chemistry where you take a a piece of something called litmus paper And you dip it into a chemical that you want to test, and it will indicate whether that liquid is an alkaline base or if it's an acid, depending on the color that that paper changes. But that terminology has been expanded over the years to include a variety of things. Now we talk about a litmus test as a a way to determine the best candidate to vote for. If we want to know what that candidate supports or if that candidate supports our position, you might Look at their past efforts as a litmus test to see if that's the candidate that you want. Or you might use a litmus test to determine if this person you're on a date with is worth your time. It's a test to determine someone's true intentions or beliefs. Essentially, it's to determine who they really are. Now, here in John's letter, he's instructing us to do a litmus test of the spirits. John tells us, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. Not every spirit claiming it's from God can be trusted. When John is writing this letter, there's already a large group of heretics rising up and leading people away from the truth. John calls them antichrists people who are against Christ. He tells you that you have heard they were coming, but John warns us that they are already in the world. The Antichrists in John's day were those who denied Jesus as the Son of God or his resurrection from death in the flesh. It was anyone who opposed God's word. It's Satan and his minions, the spirits of the world who have corrupted and twisted God's word, misleading people throughout the ages to follow false doctrine. And unfortunately, they're still at work today as God's word is constantly being challenged and tested, as even Christians begin to walk away from the sound teaching of Scripture in favor of a twisted or watered-down version of Christianity that barely talks about Christ or his death and resurrection for the forgiveness of sins. 
it's pretty easy to walk into a Christian bookstore and not be aware of the amount of false teaching that has arisen from these corrupt spirits of the world. But they exist. And some of these false teachers that follow them are famous and successful. They preach things like inclusivity, regardless of whether you are repentant of your sins or not. They preach, do what makes you feel good, saying things like, God just wants you to be happy. Or, here's how you can have your best life now. Or, how to prosper using these 12 easy Christian principles in your life. Although those Christian principles are often taken out of context and misused. Instead, John cautions us. He says, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. So how do we test the spirits? Well, by using the litmus of the scriptures. First, we look to see if they confess the arrival of Jesus Christ in the flesh. We look to see if they confess Jesus' death on the cross and resurrection from the tomb. We look to see if they confess Jesus as the Son of God and Savior of the world. We test to see if they confess a faith that is given to them and not based on their own merits and reason. Test the spirits, even when they appear Christian, to make sure that they actually agree with God's word in more than just vocabulary. Because there's a lot of people who sound Christian, but when you dig deeper, they are anything but. The Mormons, for example, confess things that sound Christian, even using terms like grace. And it leads many people to believe that they are Christian. But unfortunately, they deny the death of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of all sins. And instead, they tell you that you are saved by grace only after all that you can do. Not by grace alone, as St. Paul tells us. Once again, the Bible is our litmus test. We test the words of these false prophets against the words of Holy Scripture, God's own word. John writes in verses 13 through 16 of this letter, By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. We did not make the choice to believe. He gave us faith through his spirit. John continues, and we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. Our litmus test by which we test all spirits is the gospel of Jesus Christ. If these spirits confess anything other than what God has told us, then we should refuse to hear them because they are from the world and not from God. We know who God is because of his love for us. John tells us that love is the defining characteristic of God. The love that the world proposes is a love of self. Any church that teaches that sin is okay because God is love is really teaching falsehoods because it's teaching you to love yourself first. Go ahead, sin. Put your sinful wants before God. It's okay. Now, God is certainly love, but sometimes love appears in the form of no. No, don't do that. No, that's bad for you. You can cause harm to yourself or others. Like a loving parent, sometimes God says no, because he wants what's best for us, whether we like it or not. God's love is also different in the sense that it isn't earned. While the world teaches us that nothing is free, if you want to be loved, then you have to prove to others that you are worthy of love or that you love them first. Or if you want to be loved by God, then you have to prove that you are worthy of God's love. That's what the world teaches. But God loves us sinners unconditionally. We cannot earn God's love, and we don't have to. 
Even when we're unrepentant, God still loves us. But that doesn't mean that he won't punish us for our sins. That we're free to do whatever we want. So then how do we really know if God loves us? Just look to his son, Jesus Christ. John wrote, In this the love of God was revealed among us, that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. God did not send Jesus because we showed our love to him or proved our devotion. God sent Jesus to show his love so that we might be redeemed and live with him. We love because he first loved us, John writes in verse 19. All the spirits of the world get this backwards. And it's because they don't really understand love and therefore they don't know God. But little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Jesus' death on the cross is enough to silence the false teachers of this world. All a Christian must do to protect themselves from the spirits of the Antichrist is look at the word of God. As Martin Luther wrote in the hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, he said, The hordes of devils fill the land, all threatening to devour us. We tremble not. Unmoved we stand. They cannot overpower us. Let this world's tyrant rage. In battle we'll engage. His might is doomed to fail. God's judgment must prevail. One little word subdues him. So my friends, fear not. If you want to know God, look to his word. Let it be your litmus test against all other things. Here in Holy Scripture, God has revealed his Son in word and sacrament to us, for us. The gospel of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. As John said, so we have come to know and to believe the love God has for us. God is love. And whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. So my dear friends, may the love of God be with you all. In Jesus' name, amen. Once again, dear friends, if you would like to submit your offerings to the church, you may do so by mailing it to Emanuel Lutheran Church, P.O. Box 35 in Eagle Bend, Minnesota, or mail it to St. Matthew's Lutheran Church, P.O. Box 425 in Clarissa, Minnesota. Or you can simply go online to eaglevalleylcms.org, click on our donation page. You can set up a one-time gift or recurring gift for either church. Just click on the button that's designated for each church, and you can set up your gifts that way. And as always, may God provide you with all that you need for you and your families and keep you and give you his daily bread. Dear friends, let us go to our Lord in prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the gift of divine peace and a pardon. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the holy Christian church here and scattered throughout the world. And for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphan, and for all those in prison. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the sick and dying, and for all those who care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for our brothers and sisters in the care centers, for those who are in need of our prayers, especially for Helen Keene, for Lisa Meyerding, 
for Bev Ulrich, for Kay Nelson, for Stacy Warren, and for all others in our community who are in need of our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world our hearts may be fixed, where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Christ has been raised from the dead. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Raised from the dead, he will never die again. Death has no more dominion over him. Christ has been raised from the dead. Alleluia. Alleluia. Dying, Christ dies to sin once for all. Living, he lives to God. Count yourselves as dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead. Alleluia. Alleluia. Dear friends, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. And dear friends, before we depart, just a few announcements for you. Our next special service for our high-risk members will be June 6th at 12 o'clock here at Emmanuel. Once again, we do ask that you wear masks for that service, and uh, we do provide communion for that service as well. Uh, quarterly meetings are coming up Sunday, May 16th, the third Sunday of, the, of May. Uh, the first one is at Emmanuel, following immediately after the service. And then a quarterly meeting, uh, May 16th, at St. Matthew's at 2 o'clock. So please join us for that. Uh, quilting at St. Matthew's, May 13th and 14th, from 9 a.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. Once again, all are welcome to join. You don't have to know how to quilt to participate. Uh, they need help with sorting, folding, ironing. Um, or if you would like to learn how to quilt, I'm sure the ladies would be happy to teach you. Um, you also don't have to stay for the whole time. You can only, if you can only stay for a half hour to an hour, feel free to do so. The ladies are, are happy to have you no matter how long you can stay. Uh, Lutheran Island Camp has officially posted their summer schedules online. If you'd like to register your kids or grandkids, you can go to islandcamp.org and, and register that way. Uh, the churches do have scholarships available, so please get in contact with us. Or, or camp uh, to figure out some arrangements. Camp's, camp also has uh, scholarships available for kids that uh, might not be able to afford the full price. So please just talk to camp, talk to, to your church, and uh, let us know if we can help. Also, I'd like to extend a welcome to our new program coordinator uh, to Lutheran Island Camp. Her name is Julia, so welcome, Julia, uh, to, to camp. Uh, there is a sign-up sheet here in the back for Eagle Bend Days. There's a few spots left, especially in the evening hours, uh, so please sign up if you're available to help with that. Also, a huge thank you to Joe and Lisa Meyerding for organizing this fundraiser. Uh, they kind of stepped up last minute. Uh, once again, they've, they've taken over this uh, for us, and we're so thankful for all the hard work that they put into it. So uh, thank you, Joe and Lisa. Uh, Sunday confirmation classes are done uh, until next, next year in October, uh, but I am still waiting on memory work to be finished up and sermon summaries to be turned in. A confirmation service will be held this coming October then. Uh, so it won't be in our normal springtime. Uh, we did it in October last year, and I think we're going to continue that pattern uh, for the time being. 
Uh, so please get those sermon summaries turned in. Make it a uh, time to schedule with me to do memory work so that you can get all that stuff done this summer. And then one final thing, we, uh, Jesse and I would like to make a, an announcement to you folks. Uh, we are expecting, uh, Jesse and I are expecting twins. Uh, we are almost uh, just over our 10th week. Uh, we're so thankful that the Lord has blessed us with this. And uh, we will be talking a little bit about some of these things in our quarterly meeting, uh, some of the changes that we will have to make uh, for the parsonage and, and for ourselves. So uh, we're so thankful that God has been able to bless us with that. I think that's it in the way of announcements, dear friends. I pray that God would continue to bless each and every one of you, that you would go in God's peace. And remember to test all spirits to see whether or not they are from God. And let the scriptures be your litmus test for that. So go in God's peace, dear friends. We hope to see you in God's house next Sunday. Go in his peace. Amen.